Welcome to The Fight with Teddy Atlas, presented by Dynamic Striking. I'm Ken Rideout, joined as always by the voice of all combat sports, the legend Teddy Atlas. Teddy, how you doing? Not as good as um, the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, and not as good as Taylor Swift and Kelsey and, and Mahomes uh, and their great coach. But, you know, hey, we... We gave the wrong, to our great fans, we gave the wrong football pick. How could I go against Mahomes? And how could I go against my grandson? Listen, I'm always <laughs> trying to be really transparent, uh, you know, and the, I, it's important. Um, my bookie, you should start paying my grandson, Joseph. Seriously, because he told me, Papa, Kansas City's winning. And he's six <laughs> years old, and he's a he's a genius, as all my grandchildren are. He said, "Papa, they're they're gonna win." So there it is. I I gave Forty uh, Niners. They were winning most of the game, but they didn't win. And how can yeah, you go as against close Mahomes? as you can get to predicting yeah. who was gonna I mean, win? That was game. a coin toss. I but I might have. I'm gonna ask you, Ken, because I might have been okay, and I might have been bailed out by giving the folks the over because uh, what was it? I don't know what it was, but I know the over wound up 47. And uh, I thought it was, I thought it was 57, but let me check. Oh, I, all right. I thought it was in the forties. Let me, let me confirm. Hold on. Uh, by the way, the, um, <laughs> Rob and I had, a, um, a friend of mine at the last minute was like, Hey, do you want to join this, um, Super Bowl pool? Basically, yeah. 10 people, $1,000 each, and, and winner takes all. You just get the yeah. final, add up the score, you get the final number. So Rob and I had zero and one. So when Kansas City, when, when San Francisco went down and kicked the field goal, my kids are jumping around, and I'm like, no, 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 the Kansas City still has to get the ball. We have to stop them. And if, if, can't, if they could have just stopped them on that fourth and one, 5000 bucks each for me and Rob. Instead, I don't even... Uh, I don't even it, want to tell you my war stories, all right? Because <laughs> that's like a, even, this is like bad beats. The over under, sorry, the over under was forty seven and a half. Over, all right, so we didn't get it. We we were, uh, I I took the over, so it was under. It Dang. was under. It was. I'll under. tell you what. If I had the over going into the second half, I would have been like scratching my head. How are these teams not scoring points? It was so low scoring. I I can't believe it. I would have bet everything on the over. I tell you though, again, Staten Island and look, our country, uh, Super Bowl has become you know a pastime. It's become like a holiday, and what do people do? They watch for the commercials, the halftime show. The the and the numbers, the the squares, right? The boxes. Yeah, that's right. And you know, people forget when something like a misfield, uh, extra point, like the kicker for uh, uh, the uh, what was the forty ers right? He misses uh, the extra the point. Yeah, no, uh, 49ers, right? He yeah. he misses the extra point, and you know, you know. All right, it is what it is. No, no, no. Thousands, <laughs> tens of thousands. Oh, I know. Hundreds, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars just in boxes have now gone from one guy's almost in his pocket to another guy's. Just, just bang. Just like that. And that's what people are being, that's what people are feeling. <laughs> They're not feeling the the pain of all oh, the team, you know, it could come back to haunt them. They're thinking right now at this minute, I just blew a freaking box because of this <laughs> son of a, you know, whatever. Uh, go ahead. I, sorry, I told my kids when we were watching, I'm like, oh, if we win this, everyone's getting five hundred dollars. And when they when when Kansas City scored, my two younger guys. They were so mad. They were like stomping up. I'm like, all right, guys, go take a shower. They want my my middle son turned around. He's like, shut up. I'm like, excuse me. He's like, shut up. I'm going. 
I had to run up and like lecture him and be like, if you behave like this watching sports, we can't watch sports, dude. This is crazy. That game has nothing to do with us. You didn't lose anything. You just didn't win some extra money. But he was so fired up. He said to me when, when he thought we were winning, he's like, Dad, we should bet on every game. I looked at my wife uh-huh. and I said, oh, my God, we've uh-huh. got a, we got a what problem. Did you start? <laughs> what did you start? Um, yeah. yeah, but look, uh, we all know the game was fixed, right? Because of the Swifties, right? Oh, you that's know, right. We yeah. Right where the Swifties and Taylor Swift <laughs> flew in from Japan. We know. I mean, just like, you know, just like we know... <laughs> That uh, that Tyson Fury, you know, cut himself or <laughs> had the guy cut him, right, to get out yeah. of the fight because you know the fans knew that fight was never going to happen. But um, but really, the only guy who knew anything was my my very special grandson. All my grandchildren are special, but my my grandson who knows how to pick. Who from now on, I, there's no playing around. I just go to him and say, who who's going to win the game, and. Uh, We'll 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 be you know we'll be doing we'll be doing good, uh, just with that, but it comes. the The game was a great game. You can't. I mean, it was excellent. Aside from the numbers and all the box <laughs> stuff going on, a tremendous theater, right? I mean, a a lot. A lot better than a fight that we're gonna have to talk about in a minute. <laughs> Teddy, how about how about the the odds makers? They had um, you had San Fran uh, minus two, and then you had the over under forty seven and a half. Both <laughs> and the and if they had they won. You're talking about a point spread, and on, on the on the minus two they win by three, and the over under were off by a half a point. I mean well, that's pretty good odds doing. making by the bookies. Yeah, they. They're pretty good at what they do. They're pretty good at what they do. Yep. I'm I'm waiting for our fans who criticize everything to say they don't know what they're doing. You know, but <laughs> I guess right now, <laughs> yeah, right? Because the only ones who know anything are the fans out there. They, you know, I mean, have they ever been in you know boxing? No, but um, <laughs> you know, but but do they know everything and know that you're wrong? yes? You know, are they always right? Yes. Are you an idiot? Yes. <laughs> you know, should should the sky fall on top of you? Yes. You know, because they know. They know. You know, they, they just haven't gotten a chance to, you know, get out there on a large platform and tell everybody yet. Uh, but their day's coming. But I guess, you know, they're practicing from the basements of their grandmother's houses or wherever, wherever they are, you know, where they're showing uh, their great knowledge and disdain for people that actually have been in the business making a living at it. doesn't matter that they haven't been, you know. <laughs> uh, that, that, that doesn't matter. But I guess that's a nice way to kind of slide into uh, the fights. There wasn't too many key ones, but uh, speaking of key, there was a guy named Keyshawn Davis that was, you know, it, it had the appearance he was stepping up with Pedraza, former world champion, tough guy, you know. Uh, definitely had that. The only time Pedraza's been stopped is by Tank Davis, who pound for pound is up in my top five, I think, or wherever he is, but, and a tremendous punch. But yeah, take us... Take it. I, I give a little early, you know, running diagnostics of it. But you take us uh, step by step, inch yeah, well. by inch. Slowly I turn. <laughs> Niagara Falls. Well, that's a classic, right? That's a classic, right? Three Stooges. Yeah, of course. You gave a uh, pretty thorough summation there. Um, Keyshawn Davis, young superstar, stepping up in class, in with Jose Pedraza, who at this point is, I mean, I guess a gatekeeper. Um, you know, he represents that next level, although not quite on the, um, you know, in the top of the division. But Keyshawn Davis did exactly what he was supposed to do. He looked excellent, just took Pedraza apart. Um I thought it was an incredible performance from Keyshawn Davis. How'd you like him as a prospect, and what'd you think of the performance? Now let me let me you know let me come out now as to, uh, and 
you're, you're selling a, the car, you know, I'm, I'm just <laughs> following along, right? You're yeah. selling a car, the, and let me come out and kick the tires. Let me pick up the hood, make sure there's an engine there. Let me kick the tires a little bit. All right, yeah, he looked great. He looked terrific. Uh, how much it was him, how much was Pedraza looked very shop-worn. You know, yes. he's an older guy. He's been around. He's been in a lot of tough fights. Uh, but he's terrific. I like him. He's, I like his, uh, the kind of fights he makes. But uh, he was shop one, all right? Uh, so he and he had a lot of things in the negative column, Pedraza. Uh, he's been inactive. I don't think he's made this weight at 135 for about four years. Um I, I believe I'm accurate with that. But so I I believe he, you know, he, it wasn't easy for him to make the weight, all right? But look, we don't have to have a sympathy party. You sign a contract, you get in the ring. But my job is to break everything down, to break it all down. And regardless of, you know, with, with no, you know, side to be on, with, you know, no dog in a race, horse in a race, as they say, you know, unattached from any kind of biases. Just, you know, do your job, Ted, and give it all to us. And I liked Keyshawn. I liked that he was more more fun to watch, quite frankly. He sat down more. He um, got more on his punches. He, you know, he did... He did everything right. He counter punched when he had to. He went to the body nicely. Uh, used the jab to set up punches. He he did what he had to do with a. He also showed a good IQ. You know, I I always liked the cerebral part. He uh, he saw that Pedraza was moving his head from too far away, coming in. So what did he do? He timed him. He pot shot at him. Uh, on the way in, then he started sitting down on those shots and putting them together a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh, you know, he was within himself. He was patient. He didn't waste anything. Uh, he was, you know, he was accurate for the most part. Uh, I really, you know, I I like I like what I saw. I I like what I saw, and I I like to see him step up. I know people are gonna say, Teddy, he just did. No, I well, I just kicked the tires, didn't I? A little bit, right? A little bit, and <laughs> um, uh, did he really step? All right, in perception, yeah, he did, right? But uh, m maybe the car had more miles on the odometer uh, than we thought, and so uh, yeah, you're not buying exactly what you were hoping you were buying. That you know, it's it's not quite that, you know, two thousand model, you know, to twenty twenty model, twenty twenty one model, twenty twenty two model. You know, it's it's more like the, you know, maybe a nineteen ninety model. Who, who, whatever. I like what I saw. I want to see more of it. With a step up, he called out. He he called up. Called out Teofimo before Teofimo's fight. Uh, all right, I'm ready. He called him out, you know, and then he said that if Teofimo doesn't take the bait, uh, well, he, he called out Navarati. I, I love Navarati. I love him. I love him. Love him, love him, love him. And, and he'd probably have an edge, except for experience, and maybe, you know, he's bigger than Navarati a little bit, but in a natural way. But other than experience, um, Keyshawn would have an advantage because he's a sharpshooter. He's all the things I just broke down uh, in his performance. He's an accurate counterpuncher and, you know, never really gives you chances to counter him coming in. He's aggressive. You know, he, he's awkwardly clever, but he'll come in and give you opportunities Obviously, to hit him. So uh, I have, I've, I'd rather see Teofimo because we could kill two birds with one stone. We could find out how good Kishu is and is going to be. And we could find out 
what do we really have with Teofimo? What do we really have? Because I don't know that we know right now. And again, you're going to get the people that do have biases, that do have agendas, that are going to sit on the other side of the curb, you know, the other side of the road, and they're going to say whatever they want to say. But I don't care about those people. I'm tired of them. You know, you, you, want to, you have the right to be a fan, but you don't have the right to be stupid, to, <laughs> to not look at what's in front of you, presented as evidence that your eyeballs saw, and, and ask questions. It don't mean you're not being loyal to your guy or you don't still love your guy, but you, you shouldn't be brain dead. I mean, you know, you should... Right now, we don't know. I don't think we know what Teofimo... You know, we saw him beat the great Lomachenko. Lomachenko had been inactive. He, he was coming on late in that fight. But still, he beat him. Great performance. Great performance. Then he loses to Cambosas. Then, then, he, then he has a very... Sandor... Um, what, what's team. his name here? Yeah, he has a very... Thank you. He has a very difficult... With a good fighter. He's a good fighter. But that could have went either way. And then he has this performance. So... And look, I said going in, I said going in that he can be hot and cold. He can fight up to his opposition or down to it in his mind. In other words, if he doesn't think Ortiz is that kind of cover, he can fight down to it. No excuse. But in other words, mentally, he's not always there. He's not, he's not always where he needs to be. Kansas City Chiefs earlier in the year, you know, a few, actually a few weeks before the playoffs, everyone's wrote them off because they got blown out by the Raiders who didn't even make the playoffs. Blown out. Blown out of the stadium. They weren't mentally ready. They weren't for that game. They weren't mentally ready. And they were mentally ready for the Super Bowl because they know that's what they get ready for. Maybe Ortiz is uh, Tia Fien was that guy. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he's the guy that only is ready in all ways when there's a threat. When there's a Super Bowl. When there's that kind of level of opposition in his mind and moment in his line in his mind so uh i want to see if i'm finished if i want to you know close out on Keyshawn. i think i covered it pretty well i like what i saw you know he um i like the way he sat down on his punches i like the way that he he broke down really broke down uh pedraza Catch him coming in. Uh, he didn't throw except when he knew he was in position to throw. And at the right time, uh, he, you know, like I said, I want to see him with somebody better, uh, somebody else. Uh, are we ready to, are we ready for the Teofimo Lopez, <laughs> Jermaine Ortiz fight? And yep. tell me if we are. And yes. uh, go ahead. We are ready for that, and uh, <laughs> I wish we I And wish everything we that goes with it, the controversy, <laughs> the decision back and forth, who won, who didn't win, you know, yeah. do, do we need that national commission, which I think we do. I can tell you who didn't win, and that's the fans. The fight was terrible. Well put. Uh, um, I like Jermaine Ortiz. I thought that your uh, preview last week was right on the money. I mean, he could have won that fight. I don't think Oh, yeah, that's did. right. Thank you for reminding us. Um, you had, thank you, Jermaine, Ken. You had Ortiz in the over um, to go the distance. I think it was plus 675. While I don't think that the... No, no, I got to be uh, got to be honest here. I, 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 I had Ortiz. This is what I did. I said I would take a peanut mm -hmm. on, on like Bill Krakenberger, the handicap a friend of mine says in professional, you know, terms. Uh, out there in Vegas, but I would put a peanut on Ortiz at plus 700, right? Or whatever it was. It was uh, Ortiz in the over was at plus 675. Yeah, I was going to take, I told our fans, my bookie, to take Ortiz by decision because you That's right. looked and you said, hey, Teddy, by decision, you could get really 
like 700 yep. uh whatever it was was somewhere that's around right. 675 it was, it whatever. was ortiz by decision was the exact bet it wasn't a parlay it was just ortiz by decision that's right i just don't want to give me credit for some i don't deserve i i no, didn't no, no. Say i was the, gonna you were right yeah. on the screen no, i you didn't describe what, pre- what could happen yeah, perfectly I, I didn't say the over i i might even said take a peanut on under because they were going to give you they yeah, were going to no, give the, you some the exact debt the exact bet was ortiz by decision yeah, that was at the end of the day. That's what we settled on. And look, it could have made up for maybe some of your Super Bowl losses if uh, if you listen to me. It could have made up for that, but it wasn't to be because they left out one important part. You're not just fighting when you're fighting the the star. You know, you're fighting the system too. You are. Well, hang on. Before you get into it, let me just say that one more thing, and then I want to hear everything you have to say because. Like I said, you you were right on the money with the pick. Uh, Ortiz by decision looked good, but when I when I hear all the controversy, I don't look at that fight and think. I kind of look at it the way you saw the Fury and Ganu fight. You were like, oh, they didn't expect much from Ortiz, and he actually did pretty good. But I thought that Tio won a, a, a close fight. But I also thought that from a from an optics standpoint you it's very hard to win the fight when you're trying to stay away from the guy all night i hate that style it cost de la hoya fight uh later in a big fight i, I forget it trinidad who, who, yes he he could have won that fight and he just ran away from the whole round anytime someone does that i almost look at it like at that when, when you're that extreme with it that like dude who like give him a 10 8 for the other guy at least the other guy's trying to fight you're just trying to stay away i hate when they do it he played defense but i'm curious to hear did you think that the obviously the 17 117 111 score is insane but i'm curious to hear if you thought that um if you thought that lopez won the fight and uh man teofimo i i feel bad for the kid man he's having some mental health struggles his response on the mic after the fight is just he has no one around him telling him, please don't say that on an open mic to the audience. You know, it's just, it's sad to watch what's happening. You know, I, I'll start this way. I give credit to the commentators that a lot of times they howl for their meals, not just them, all of them. And whatever their boss wants to hear, their boss, of course, being the promoter who's got to deal with the network and ultimately pays them, uh, or whatever their boss wants them to say, they say. And they don't go against it. And their boss would be Bob Arum in this case, right? Top rank. They want Teofimo to win. And he's the A-side. But they they didn't. They, they, they didn't like the decision. They definitely didn't like the disparity in the score uh, by Steve Weisfeld. And they, they, they didn't like the comments that he made. And usually... Sometimes these commentators will say nothing, and that's saying a lot. Just say nothing when you should say something. Or you, it's obvious that you, you thought it was weird what it was said, and you don't say nothing, right? That silence is deafening sometimes. And sometimes when you're that silent, you couldn't be louder. With what, what people realize you must be thinking, right? So they did say something about both his comments that were really strange, right? I mean, some of the historic references he was making, Ken, and yeah. and and he's talking religion in between cursing, and, and he's, I don't know. It, it, uh, you have a right to say, hey, we just hope he's okay, you know, and he's got the right people, whatever. Um, we do. But um, I thought, I... I thought that the decision was bad, and I thought the one seventeen one eleven made it worse. And I did think one commentator was strange. I kept saying because everyone was like, "How could the one judge have it one seventeen one eleven?" And it's like he kept going out of his way. One commentator, um, he's a great Steve Weisfeld's great judge. Steve Weisfeld's great judge. Steve Weisfeld, and I was like. Wait a minute. <laughs> that great judge g- just gave anything but a great score on national TV. Why are you saying that? And why are you saying it repetitively? Repetitively. Why? It's weird. 
It's kind of like, and first of all, I want to take a shout out to Rob, our producer. He's in Australia, down under, and he's doing this with us. Um, uh, first of all, the magic of technology is, is just crazy. Um, he's halfway across the world, the other side of the world, and <laughs> and and he's, he's doing this. So first of all, shout out to him as always. Thanks. And then if he can, by tomorrow, get up with this because I didn't give him a head start on this but I just thought of it there, there's a TV movie reference that kind of fits in here where you're you you know like that commentator is saying he's a great he's great like after he just he just gave a bad performance why are you saying he's great in The Godfather 2 there was a a hearing going on, a Senate hearing, and one of the senators, crooked senator, that uh, was, you know, tainted and in the pocket of the mob, Michael Corleone, right, the the godfather, was in his pocket, and Corleone was on trial. And Corleone's on trial for his life. And everyone, all the other senators are looking to get at him with evidence, with accusations, and this senator kept saying, kept giving, <laughs> throwing out complimentary things, you know, <laughs> towards him. Yeah, and I, towards, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, towards the Italian people and everything because, you know, because he was, you know, he was the head of the mafia, the whole, you know, the, the whole storyline, right? And so this senator keeps saying, and yeah, you can see one of the old senators kind of like, Okay, we appreciate our esteemed colleague for saying something, you know, and then he leaves. He leaves the hearing. That's what I thought of. Like, <laughs> you know, he's he's doing what that senator did. You know, he keeps saying all these glorious things about this judge who just gave anything but a glorious decision and score. So, anyway, to get away from the Godfather for a minute... Oh, uh, The Godfather 2. Um, I thought, I disagree with you, and I get it. A lot of people thought that, you know, Lopez deserved it because he was aggressive. If both guys ran, there'd be, what, what would it be? A track meet? Uh, be no fight. So Lopez won on aggression. He should have won. You can't, you know, give a decision to a guy that's running, all that stuff. How about calling it boxing? I know that he moved a lot, and I know that he could have done more. I'm not making an excuse. Ortiz could have and should have done more. But where it differs from what the example you made about Trinidad, Trinidad uh, and, and De La Hoya. De La Hoya was winning a fight, fighting, whatever, fighting a smart fight, controlling range, <laughs> using his chair, <laughs> moving a little bit. But being smart, he's winning the fight. Then in the th uh, last three rounds, he decides to basically go kind of like we just want to watch the football game, right? So into prevent defense that sometimes you see in football <laughs> where he just tried not to lose, <laughs> tried to hold on to the, the lead. And by doing that, he blew it. He blew the lead. He blew his... Really, Blue's opportunity to complain because of the way he ran for the last three rounds. That's different than a guy who comes in with a strategy, who's fighting a much better puncher, a much more athletic guy, a much more explosive guy, which Teofimo Lopez is. And he's got a strategy, and he executes it for 12 rounds to box because he knows if he don't, he's going to get knocked out maybe. So... He's got a strategy to box to win the world title. And from round one to round 12, he sticks to that strategy. He doesn't change. He sticks to it all night long. And again, people would rather see excitement. They would rather see aggression. They would rather see bombs going off. I understand. I would too, uh, to a degree. I love boxing. Uh, was there maybe a little too much in spots where, again, I said it early, where Ortiz could have done a little more, yes. But I thought he did enough. I thought that he came in there with the plan he needed. And that's what boxing's about. 
it's about the it's supposed to be about the one fair place that sometimes when life's not fair, that ring is supposed to be about the one fair place where life can become fair. Where on one given night, if a guy's prepared enough, smart enough, you know, gutsy enough, driven enough, you know, if determined enough, if a guy is that, no matter what his life's been in the past, he came from a poor place, he came from where he had nothing, where, you know, everybody said he was never going to be nothing. On that one given night, if he goes in there and he executes the way he trained to execute, even if the even if he's a guy that never was born with power, even if he's the, you know, the 90-pound weakling when he was in school and he got picked on, you know, and he got bullied... And, and, you know, he, he wasn't as strong as the other guys. With all of that, if he trained hard enough, if his technique and expertise is up to the task, with all that work, all those hours, all those years that he put into it, and his heart is there to do it, his mind is there to do it, he can beat the bully. He can beat the guy that used to, you know, kick sand in his face, so to speak, when he was a kid. He can make life fair on one given night. That's what my sport's about. That's what I believe it's about. For you people in the, you know, in the confines and protection of your basement sometimes <laughs> that say whatever you say, that like you know. And like I said earlier, show me how many fighters you've trained. Show me, how many, <laughs> show me your record. <laughs> show me your record of how many fights you've had. Really, I'd like to see it. Because you're an expert. You're an expert. You know everything. I'm not saying I know everything. I know more than you. All right? <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah, I said it. Okay, I said it. Yeah, I did. I said it. Am I being bragging? No. No, I'm not. Am I prone to be bragging? No. I hope not. No. Confident, maybe. Truthful. I want to always try to be that way. But bragging, no. I don't, I don't like that. But, yeah, I do. For the most part, yeah, I do know more because I've been in this freaking business for over 50 years. I better know more. Otherwise, like Customato, my mentor would say, Teddy, go, go on the corner and start selling Italian ISIS if you don't know by now what the freak you're supposed to know about this business from a physical, technical, mental, psychological standpoint. You better know. I know that... Ortiz, and I give him credit, he went in there with a strategy to disarm a guy, to, to, you know, to disarm the bomb, not let it explode. <laughs> and he did that. And in doing it, it wasn't always, you know, it wasn't always fun to watch or it definitely wasn't exciting but it was effective. And the other guy tried to get to him to lay the bomb. He wasn't effective. What about the shortcomings on his part? Where he didn't jab to the chest, which I would have I would have trained him to do. Jab to the chest of the guy moving on you, so at least you hit something. You know, and you control him, you stabilize him, you don't let him pot shot you on the outside. Cut the ring down, make it smaller. Go to the body, take some air out of his wheels so he can't move on you all night long. I didn't see any of that. I saw spots. But I didn't see any of that. And I give credit to Lopez. He's explosive. He, he's got explosive legs and power in his hands where he can close a gap real fast and explode on you like Pacquiao used to do. But I didn't see him do it. He did it once or twice. I didn't see him do it other than that. Other than that, I saw him reaching. I saw him getting frustrated. I saw him showboating where he was frustrated and he backed up and he mocked Ortiz and played to the crowd. Come on, come fight. Come be stupid. Throw away your game plan and do what I want you to do and need you to do to win this fight. Walk in. Walk in let me hit you on the freaking potato. Come on. Come on. How dare you not listen to me? How dare you not do that? Come on. If Ortiz did that, what? He would have made you guys happy? He would have made you happy? Well, he wouldn't have... He wouldn't have made himself happy because 
He would have been an idiot. He knew what he was and what he wasn't. He knew, you know, Clint Eastwood in the Dirty Harry movie. A man must know his limitations. Ortiz knew that. He came up with a fight that made sense, a fight plan that made sense for him. And again, you call it running, I call it boxing. Could have been a little bit more. On the positive, he was on the outskirts of the ring, jabbing, scoring was jab, controlling Lopez with the jab. Not enough, but he was doing it. Was he countering? Yes. When Lopez came in, he counted him, coming in, picked spots. He even flurried in spots. There was spots where he stood, you know, only for a moment, being smart about that, <laughs> you know, picking a spot for that where he fluffy for a moment, then get out again. He did those things. He did them all. Again, yeah, I would have liked to see a little more. But I thought I saw enough. I thought I saw because of what I didn't see with Lopez. I would have liked to see more ring cutting. I would have liked to see more body punching. I would have liked to see more jabs, especially to the chest. I would have liked to see that. I would have liked to see that, you people in your basements or wherever you happen to be unloading your stuff from, you know, bomb shelter somewhere. I don't know. But I'm going to point out, if you guys are right, right, I'm going to ask you a really honest question. First of all, you're going to have to go into the record books, yeah, of this great, great sport that's been around longer than any other sport, you're going to have to go in there and you're going to have to remove some names because you said you can't win doing this. So you're going to have to go and correct some of the names that are erroneously in that record book that shouldn't be in the record book that have done what Ortiz did, and they have won in doing it. One of the guys you're going to have to go back and do, he's a great one. I don't know how you're going to get him out of there, but Muhammad Ali, you, you might have to get him when, when he was floating like a butterfly, you know, stinging like a bee. There were, there were times where people thought he was running all over the place, you know, so... Especially early on, maybe with Doug Jones, where it was a close fight. You better take him out of that. Better take him out of that book. Uh, maybe also the guy who is one of the heavyweight champs of the world now. And talking about Ali, he's he's the predecessor. He, he, he is he he is the next best promoter other than Ali. Maybe ever in this sport. Guy named Tyson Fury. Take him out of the record book. Because when he won his first title against Klitschko, he ran. He boxed. But he ran in your estimations. Take him out. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. There's a great fighter named Willie Pep. Uh, 300 pro fights. Will of the Wisp. Once they say he won a round without throwing a punch. Yeah, get him out of there. Great boxer, couldn't break an egg, but great boxer, great legs, great all around. You know, so again, I I don't just throw venom like you guys do and just, I'm right, because I'm right. I'm right. You're wrong. You're an idiot. You this, you that. This should happen to you. No, I don't do that. I, I throw facts. I throw experience. And I throw facts your way. And the best thing about the other night for Teofimo really was that Barnum and Bailey entrance with the Showman movie. That that was so, that, I mean, I didn't think it was great, great, but it was so, you know, I got the idea of it. I didn't get the idea of the way he fought. I didn't get that idea. And I think it's fair to say, because that's why I'm here. That's why you come here. You, I'll keep on. That's why I come here. Why you come here. Not to hear me favor someone because I like them or dislike them. I don't favor. No. 
Because I'm going to tell you what I believe the truth is from experience and from factual material, not just stuff that I grab in the air. So would I rather see boxing done in a way you could do it with your legs? I just mentioned enough guys, right? Uh, how about the fight? You guys, a lot of you just love Shakur Stevenson. Okay, take that win away from him against Delos uh, Santos, uh, Delos Santos, right? Am I saying his name right? Um, it, it was just recently, Ken. Just while I'm talking, uh, just uh, back me up. Uh, Delos Santos, that was it. Anyway, uh, he, he just won that fight, right? A lot of people, you know, it wasn't a great fight to watch either. Pretty, oh, I, I, I'll be honest with you. Compared to that fight, I thought Ortiz was like Joe Frazier. I mean, <laughs> because uh, <laughs> Shakur, uh, he, didn't even, he didn't throw as many punches as Ortiz did. If I'm wrong, go ahead. Show I'm wrong. Get the stats. Show I'm wrong. Not that I trust those stats half the time because it's just somebody trying to push down a button while somebody's thrown. Uh, the accuracy of that, you really think it's perfect? All right, I got something to sell you. Really, I do. There's an ocean, beautiful ocean, uh, that, that's not too far from me. I'm going to, you know, you can have it. Get rid of your swimming pool. I'll give it to you for a discount, all right? So, Shakur Stevenson in his fight, you guys love him, a lot of you do, with De Los Santos, right? I, I know he just uh, retired, but he'll be back like in about five minutes. Yeah, anyway, right? <laughs> Anyone believe that he's really retired? So, and again, I, I just tell what I believe the truth is. I Don't you guys get sick of the people that tell you what you want to hear because it's gentler on them, because they won't, won't make enemies? <laughs> you were talking about Edwin De Los Santos, Shakur's last opponent? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so look, take, take that win away from, take that win. Look, I'm only doing what you're telling me to do. You have to understand that. I am, right now I'm working for you, for the fans that, that thought that this decision should have went uh, to Shakur, I uh, mean to Lopez, right? And that Ortiz, you know, should never get it. Yeah, it's, it's a joke when, when you move like that, right? So I'm doing your job. You said that, right? So you got to take that win away from Shakur Stevenson. Let's take it away. I want you to take it away. I'm watching Get your eraser out, go into the record book, I'm watching, and erase it. Because he, what did he do that night? What did he do? Was he Roberto Duran that night? Huh? I don't think so. Not even close. Was he president of, was, uh, did he throw a million punches? Did he not move around the ring? But you call him boxing when it's him. Because he's your guy. Because you like him. Right? Because, you know, he's already in there. He's already got a title. He belongs. He's legit. Right? Right? <laughs> yeah, come on. Look at yourselves. You know, it's time. We all got to look at ourselves sometimes. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. More than I like to sometimes. Yeah. But I'm talking right now. You guys. Look at yourselves. Does it make sense what you're saying? How you say it sometimes? Does it really? So... Change, change, change the score, the the record books. Really, go go do that, okay? And um. And again, I'm not saying that fight was. I'm not saying that fight was a bonfire. My God, it wasn't even a campfire. All right, <laughs> I get it, but Ortiz, I give him credit for, you know, again he could have done a little more. Only the second time, the first time he was ever on that stage for a world title, but only the second time close to that stage. The first time was with Teofimo. So I give him, I give him a little credit. And and you know, you know who never, you know what also bothers me a little bit. And I don't love this guy, but again, that's I I don't have to love a guy to say something to stand up for him. But Jimmy Birchfield, promoter from the Connecticut, from uh, you know, from New England, been around for forever. Used to do all the Friday night fights, fights, put fighters in, in the New England area when we 
did fights on Friday night fights and we did them up in Foxwoods or the Mohegan Sun. He was the guy up there, you know? And he he had this kid, you know? And he's never had the big guy. He's always been around trying to get that big guy, you know? Get that one. Everyone, you know, can appreciate it that's been in the business that, you know, your trainer... Your trainer that's been in the PALs, in the boys club, been out there taking care of kids for your whole life, in the business, and you you just wish one day you get that guy. And most of the time they never do. They never do. But they're out there toiling away, you know. And um, and this guy, Jimmy Birchfield, has been that guy in the promotion. But always, you know, when, when he ran the shows up there, you know, his, his guy's would be placed in uh, good fights. He always made pretty competitive fights. They been and you put good fights on Friday night fights, you know. And his guys sometimes lost, sometimes they won, you know. But it was, you know, it was it was fair stuff, you know. He, it was just the level he was at. He he's not at that next level. He he, but he always dreamed to be in that next level. That he'd get that guy and he'd be the He'd be the Bob Arum for that night. He'd be the Eddie Hearn, the Frank Warren, the Al Heyman, you know. And he comes to this fight, brings his guy Ortiz, and at the end of the day, you know what he got? You know what he got told? Not verbally, just by the action. Actions speak louder than words, right? Ken, you know what he got told? He got told, you don't belong. You're never going to belong. This is the big boys club, baby. This is the big boys club where the big promoters run it. That's why we need a national commission. Where the big, where we run it. We run it. We say who wins and who don't win. Yeah, that's right. We're the big boy club. And you don't belong. And you're never going to belong. You're never going to belong. Doors closed to you. But I paid my dues. I've been... Doors closed to you. You can't pay enough dues. <laughs> you can't get in here. This is the elite club. You people like that? To hear that? No, you don't. No, you don't. Because you because you you can compare it in life to other things in your life out there when you hear that. And you and you can compare it and you can connect it. And it don't feel good. It don't sound good. It ain't good. It ain't good. And you don't like it. Because there's decency in you that say, no, no, that's not how we treat people. Everyone should get a chance if they work hard enough. They merit that chance. Everyone should be treated the same. You know, they shouldn't be given and entitled to it, but they should be treated the same if they work their backside off and they dream and then they try to fulfill that dream. Yeah, they should be allowed in that club. We're in we're in a 20. 2024 there should be no doors locked you know where it's exclusive only to the in people the people in power no that shouldn't be but that was on display it really was i saw him in a ring i told my son my son teddy who's the best scout in the nfl i told him afterwards i said that's what i saw he was told, you can't get in here and you're never going to get in here. Ha, 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 ha. And I felt, I felt it. I felt it. And I'm telling you, this is a guy who, who I, I, I'm not in love with. I, I always liked him for years, you know, putting on good shows, the best he could put on. Like I said, up in the Foxwoods and the Mohegan Sun, up in all the New England areas. You know, I, I, but there was something he disappointed me with some years ago. So, you know, I'm I'm not in, I'm not the head of his fan club, but I am here to point out things that are wrong when they're wrong and right when I think they're right. That and that's what that that's what that was. Again, Ortiz could have done more, but I thought he did enough. Uh, going, you people out there, you 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 know, you say some. Stand by, but also you're gutsy enough to say this is what, and you believe strong enough to say this is what I believe, fine. But then be strong enough and gutsy enough and honest enough 
to look at it and say, wait, could I have been wrong here? Because if I go by that criteria that I just put out there, that you guys put out there, then guys like Shakur Stevenson, you, you got to take a win away from him. Or you got to, again, you got to remove those illustrious names I just mentioned in the record. You got to remove them. Take them out of the ring record book. Get them out of there. You know, you, 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 got, it's, you can't have it both ways. And that's why we need a national commission. Okay? I'll leave on that. Rob, put up the petition. I know you put it up there all the time. But we have our crew. I have my, my, my A-team. You know, Pedro Martinez Fraga, Dan Donovan, Keith Sullivan. Um, they're all lawyers. One's a former congressman. We are. We are going to Congress. Oh, by the way, remember I promised, remember a few weeks ago when we had that, again, a controversial decision situation where Virgil Ortiz, I thought he looked very good, but he was in there with Lawson, and they stopped the fight really early in the first round. And I was all over, so were the fans, all over Tony Weeks saying, get him out of there. Really, I've seen too many mistakes by Tony Weeks. Get him out of there. And, and he got blasted. And then he defended himself on his social media. Remember that, Ken? Yeah, a little course. while after that. And he, and he put it up and he took it down. Suspiciously quick. Sus- suspiciously quick. Put it up and he said, the reason I stopped it basically is because uh, Lawson had failed a brain scan. Took it right down. Because that, that is criminal. That is scary. That's scary. You're saying that the commission in Nevada... Allowed him, knowing that he failed a brain scan, allowed Lawson to go in the fight where he could have died. Could have got killed right there, one punch. That's what you say. Took it down. And, and then what did I say, Ken? What did I say that day? I said, I promise you. I promise the fans out there, the ones that care about this sport. And I figure if you're here, you care about this sport. And we got over 300,000 subscribers. I promise you, give you my word, that we're, boxing doesn't investigate itself, doesn't correct itself, doesn't look out for fighters. It doesn't. doesn't have a mechanism doesn't, to do that. I promise you we would. I promise you that we would get answers. I promise you that we would go with our team to the Nevada Athletic Commission and demand answers. Demand answers. Basically, what am I saying? Demand explanation and an investigation to get answers. And if not, we'll, we'll take it to the next point. Well, I promise you, and I just want to report back on you. Our team sent that letter, a legal letter, to the Nevada State Com- Athletic Commission. And we got a call back. We got a response. We have a meeting. Our lawyers, our, in this case, our lead lawyer, attorney, the great, and he is. They're all great, but he is. And as a man, too. Otherwise, I wouldn't be throwing such flowers because I think they're both connected, how you are as a person and how you are, you know, as a professional. Um, Pedro Martinez Fraga will be getting, having a conference with, the proper people, the appropriate people for such a meeting uh, this week, okay? This week. I will report back to you. I just wanted to let you know that it's not just words, you know, just to say the thing because it hits me at that moment. It sounds right to say it, you know. Uh, You know, it might lend itself to a little, you know, it's, it's good theater, it's not theater. It's not theater. It's a sport that has not been looked out for for a long time, maybe ever. A sport where the fighters, the participants of the sport, are not properly looked out for. And we're trying to change that. We're trying to change that. And in so, 
you should realize that means you're not looked out for too, just by the way, you know, just by the way. Um, but we're only the elite, uh, the ones with the big promoters are looked out for. Lawson was not one of those. That kid who got stopped in the first round and, you know, he, he's never made the big paydays, but he's got plenty of heart. Uh, he's not one of the special chosen ones. But you know what? He should be looked out for. He should know why that fight was stopped so quick. And we should know. We should know. For now and for the future. So I just wanted you guys to know that, yes, we did follow up on what I said we were going to do. So... When we got more, I'll tell you. And by the way, Teddy, that petition, the link to the petition is in the show notes for anyone interested. Thank you, Ken. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I think we covered that. And now take us to the last part. Yeah, that's a good thorough breakdown of the um, fights. The boxing fights, um, before we do a preview for the upcoming UFC pay-per-view with Volk and um, Ilya Tapura, just a quick shout-out to our friends at Athletic Greens. <clears throat> Please check out athleticgreens.com slash atlas to take advantage of our special offer for our listeners, 10 free travel packs with your first purchase. Athletic Greens is the all-in-one green drink. It's all you need for your vitamin and uh, mineral needs. Um, consider it an insurance policy for your body's health and immunity. I know you've been taking it, Teddy. I take it all the time, and the travel packs are perfect for being on the go. Sometimes if I'm traveling, I'll actually take one in the morning and one in the afternoon as well, especially if I'm training. How have you been getting on with the Athletic Greens, Teddy? Oh, good. If I wasn't taking them, I wouldn't be able to um, fight back the way I fight back <laughs> on this show when I feel it's necessary to fight back. You know, um, right. to push back on all the BS and all the crap. And there's plenty of it. All right. And, and some of you think some of it's here. Well, it ain't. It ain't. Well, you can ch you can take advantage of the offer by going to athleticgreens.com slash Atlas and get 10 free travel packs with your first purchase. Athletic Greens, love it. Um, all right, let's talk about the upcoming UFC pay-per-view. Uh, Alex Volkanovsky in action against Ilya Tapora, much anticipated. We will, I want to get, I want to get your preview of the fight and then we'll get into the, um, and then we'll talk about the lines, but just as you start to think about it, Volkanovski is a minus 125 favorite. Uh, Tapori is minus 105, and almost even money on the over under three and a half rounds. But we'll come back to the prediction. How you how you like this fight? What are you looking forward to the most? You just finished talking earlier in our opening about how good these lines makers are and how good they showed you they were once again in the Super Bowl how close they were to the over under to the line for the sides that it would be decided by it shows you they're right on the money again this is a hell of a fight a hell of a competitive can't get close and that's how they have it set up where it's as close as you could get and they're they're leaning towards the guy who's been there the guy with more experience you know, the guy who's been a champion uh, is a champion. The guy that they're, they're leaning towards, the guy that has done it at this level before. But they are also telling you that they recognize the potential, the talent of Topuria, the undefeated fighter. One thing he's got going, first of all, he hasn't learned how to lose yet. He, that That is something to have going for you. But the main thing that he's got going for him, and the reason why the line, again, is so close, and again, they, they've slightly favored Volkanovski because of his experience, but he, what he's done on the stage, that he's shown you he can he can handle the hot lights uh, with the top, 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 top competition. His last fight, of course, there should be an asterisk next to it. Probably, you know, to Islam, but... Uh, 
Makachev, uh, Makachev. Makachev. Yeah, Makachev is special, no doubt. But he's too big. I know, and and don't forget, Volkanovski had fought him before, and it was a competitive fight. But this time, on very quick notice, he fought the rematch with Makachev, and he got you know he got TKO. I guess it was a TKO, you would call it. I think a kick was a big part of it um, in the first round. So mentally, what did that do? You have to take that into consideration. Has that, how has that affected him? Because he's one of the most confident together guys you're ever going to meet, Volker. And I love him. He's been on this show. I, I, I just love him. I think he's great. I love what I see about Topuria. Uh, Topuria, he is tremendously talented. They're both striking comes first, but they're both well-rounded guys. Both of them. Topuria maybe more with the jiu-jitsu on the mat and Volkanovski with the grappling. They both can handle themselves anywhere in the octagon. I watched both their fights to get ready for this. I watched them again. I watched Topuria. I did my, I did my film room stuff that I spent hours uh, looking at the tapes to give this breakdown. I feel very, very good about the assessment I'm going to put out there. Topuria, he's he's like a boxer. I mean, he he can handle himself. And so can Volkanovski, tremendous strikers. They can handle themselves in professional fights with certain guys. You you put them. There's guys out there they can beat. I, and I don't mean guys off you know the basketball court. I mean guys that you know that that have been fighting that they can beat. They're that good at boxing. I call it boxing, striking, because they make it look like boxing. (laughs) Because they do the things that a boxer needs to do. Smart things. Technically sound things. So purian has got great hand speed. He's got power. Great technique. He controls range really, really well, Ken. In and out, in and out. Really well at controlling range for defense and for offense to set up counters. He counters well. He leads well. He he goes to the body. He he is a guy that doesn't really have many weaknesses. He's buttoned up. You know, he's not a seek and destroy guy. He does it systematically, but he does it consistently, and he's never lost. And he believes he would never lose. And that's part of the confidence that makes him so good. Um, I think that Volkanovski can... I'm looking for strengths and weaknesses. I just told you all his strengths. If there's a potential weakness, he's a little predictable with his in and out. Where it's pretty much in and out, not to the sides. So Volkanovski, who's very good at this, I think an opportunity, if if they watch the film, which I'm sure they have, there's an opportunity, if I was his coach, this is what I would be saying, there's an opportunity for you to maybe time Topuria as he goes out, to try to time him going out, which Volkanovski has quick feet, he could close the gap, catch him going out, but it's not easy. Uh, also, I noticed that Topuria once in a while might lead with the left hook in front. If uh, if I was Volkanovski, I would look for a straight right hand. If there's an opportunity where there is a lead left hook in front from Topuria, look to land the straight right hand. As far as Volkanovski, we all know him. We don't know Topuria is good. We all know Volkanovski. Tremendous strike. Tremendous all-around guy. Tremendously tough, beyond tough. Um, Topuria also showed me a good chin in his win against Emmett. Emmett can knock walls down, knock walls down. He's Ernie Shavers uh, from boxing with the right hand, knock walls down. And I'm not saying Topuria got caught much because he's a good defensive fighter, but he got touched a little bit and he handled really like nothing. So I think he's got a good chin. Volkanovski has everything. Heart, chin, uh, resiliency, (laughs) just refusal to give in. Refusal to give in. 
which we saw him when he was in that tea hold, whatever that was, with with the man that you know, as one of the uh, his nickname was Tea Hole, whatever his name was. Uh, remember T? Uh, you look it up. It was a couple of fights ago, and Volkanovski. He had him dead for rights. He had Volkanovski dead for rights. And it looked like Volkanovski was, it, it looked like he was having a seizure, you know, trying to get out of it. Oh, against um, T-City, um, what, uh, uh, Ortega, Brian Ortega. Ortega, thank you. And, and, and look, when you're nicknamed T-City, you, it's for a reason, because you're the best at giving those kind of holes. And he had him in it. He had him in his T-City thing. Locked down. Done. Done. You know what I mean? Mail it in. Done. <laughs> Stamp it. Finished. And it would have been. If anybody but Volk, Anyone other than Volkan out, because he doesn't say, no, no. He doesn't say it's a finish. No, you got to finish him. He, don't, he doesn't play that. So this guy is very special. He's been special. So Puri is trying to show you that he can be special. Um, on, and it starts here. It starts here. Volkanovski, like I said, well-rounded, mentally, technically, on the mat, off the mat. He even switches to southpaw uh, to make himself more effective. Uh, from the southpaw stance uh, when he needs to. Uh, I don't know how much the last fight's going to affect him, if at all, but it's going to be a hell of a fight. A hell of a fight. Because these guys, again, there's a reason why these bookies who are very smart at this stuff made it basically an even fight. Because it is, it is that. For me, it is that. Do you believe in, uh, you know, the baton being passed maybe? I don't know if it's time for Volkanovski to pass the baton. I don't know. He ain't that old. I don't know if it's time. I definitely know that he don't think it's time to pass the baton. Well, Toporia, you know, Toporia's finished every opponent but two. In his 14, 14 and 0, <clears throat> he submitted, looks like the first roughly 10 opponents, and then has all KOs, submissions, only two times gone to decision. Uh, Yusef Z Zalal, his first fight in the UFC, and then a unanimous decision over Josh Emmett. So even when he's gone the distance, he's been given a unanimous decision, but it's an impressive record. Very competitive, 100% Ken. Very impressive. I can't wait to watch it. Great, great, great fight. Great fight. Great talents, both of them. Really, and, and you got the storylines. You got the, the intangibles. You know what I mean? You got the X factors. You got... Volkanovski, the great Volkanovski, can he come back off his defeat? You know, is he still the great Volkanovski? Topuria, undefeated. No man has been able to, you know, come close to beating him. Is he going to be the next great? Because that's yeah. what he's, you know, that's what he's positioned himself to be. And for to say about him that he's going to be the next great. And and in an eye pleasing way, not just on the mat. Like I said, in a, for me, eye pleasing in a, that he's such a great striker, such an unbelievably good striker as Volkanovski is. So, really tough to choose here. R really is. I mean, if this, if someone's gonna beat Volkanovski, if someone's gonna beat him at his weight class, at his weight class, uh, I mean, this this would maybe be that someone. But go ahead, we're, set me up. Who are you going to take? Volkanovski minus 125, Taporia minus 105, and the over-under is basically even money at three and a half rounds. I'm, I'm saying it's going to go over. These guys are too good. Nobody's, nobody's giving in. Nobody's yep. giving an inch. They're good enough with striking. Nobody's getting hit that perfect punch, I don't think, or perfect kick. They're, they're too smart. They're too good that way. They're very even on the mat. Um, they're well-rounded in all ways. They know how to survive on the mat or to, to to survive or to triumph on the mat. Either way, um, to strive or survive. At the end of the day, drum roll, please. <laughs> At the end of the day, Ken, I can't go against Volkanovski. 
till you show me that you're going to beat him at his weight class. Yeah, and, you know, I agree with, with you. All the characteristics, all the special traits that make a man special. It's not just your genetic makeup. <laughs> it's not even your hard training. It's what's inside of you. What's inside of you. What's inside of you. With all of that, I'm not saying Topuria doesn't have it, but I know Volkanowski has it. I'm betting on that. I know he has that. I know he has that. And being that I know he has that, I'm going to believe he's going to come back off that disastrous fight where, you know, he took the fight on quick notice. He's going to come back and he's going to test Topuria in a way that he hasn't yet been tested and he's going to get the win. How's that, Ken? Yeah, I love the rationale. Uh, we're on the same page there. I think the same thing you think until someone shows me they can uh, beat Volk at his weight class. Kind of um, like the football game that I yep. should have stayed on and I should have listened to <laughs> Joseph. You know, yep. until somebody <laughs> shows me they can beat uh, Mahomes, you know, I'm going to stay with Mahomes. I should have yep. said that. It's been relatively quiet in uh, boxing. UFC starting to come back with the pay-per-view next weekend. So, um that's all I got, Teddy. You got anything else before we say goodbye? That was a pretty thorough breakdown, and I'm sure that everyone's looking forward to seeing this um, UFC fight. No, I am too. I am too. I, I know they're looking forward to it. It's a great fight. Yep. And um, I'll be uh, the great Charlie Monaghan has me. He, he directs all the UFC stuff, and he's got me um, going out and covering the U.S. UFC fight for ESPN, the one in Miami. Yeah. Um, he, I got to give my friend Pedro Martinez Fraga a call, see if he wants to come to that. Um, I'm just realizing now I'm going to be in Miami. That one, that one's next month. And then the month after, uh, in April, we're going to be, they got me going and covering a show in, in Vegas. So, and and look, I don't even have to say, Ken, they're good shows. Uh, that's all they put up. That's, uh, that's all they put out, good shows. And if yeah. somebody falls out, they put somebody better in. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's, true. That, that's just the way they do it. Yeah. I just hope everybody else th out there had a good Super Bowl weekend. Uh, I hope your numbers came in, your squares came in. I hope your team won. But if they didn't, just remember, there's always next year. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, Teddy, thanks for that. Uh, appreciate you as always, guys. Please like and subscribe. You know the drill. Help us out on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. And we'll be back next week to break down all the UFC action. Big card. See you guys. Have a great week. Bye.